Hi, everyone. Welcome to John Madden Football. It all began with one man. If it had been anybody other than Tripp working on it, it would have been killed. But it was really his baby. And impressing the name of the game was more than tough. He already thought we were dweebs. And he looked at it and he went, where's all the guys? Some of this I can't say for uh, family consumption, but he said, that's not an effing goal line play, that is, uh, and uh, we were like, oh no. Times weren't always filled with glory. So as EASN started taking off, it wasn't very long, maybe a year, a year and a half, two years max, but ESPN uh, came knocking on the door, and I, we're like, uh-oh. They were ahead of their time and created a legend. EA Sports, in the game. Just being able to sit there and play against another person, talk some trash. To say the least, it set a standard. You cannot deny the impact that Madden has had on this industry. This is the story behind the longest running sports game franchise. It's the story of John Madden football. And he's in for the score. Oh, that is big time football. It all begins in 1982 in San Mateo, California, when Bing Gordon and Trip Hawkins form a brand new video game company called Electronic Arts. Back then, for about five years, we were always out of money. We had kind of, you know, no secretaries and kind of $80 limits on hotel rooms where we were. The sports video game genre is still in its adolescence. In the evolutionary scale, you have 10-yard fight, the Nintendo classic, which, God, look, think back to it now, and it's like there are no plays to call. You know, you're constantly running and pretty much just throwing the ball and hoping to make it through without the tacklers coming on. And then, of course, there's Tech Mobile, which is definitely a classic, and I think for many people, it's considered the first real football game. EA begins development on their very first sports title. The first sports game we ever did was Dr. J and Larry Bird go one-on-one. -on -one. So we decided back then, we were kind of hardcore sports fans, that a sports game really needed to reflect the real guys. A relationship with a football legend begins to bloom, and his name is John Madden. He was local at the time in Oakland area and the Bay Area in California. It was like a two-day train ride where Tripp went with him and, and sat with him and, and kind of picked his brain about football for two straight days. Madden climbs on board with the project and lends his full support to the team at EA. He gave us all his playbooks. Red, 40, hut, hut. Those were really cool. Two, red. What really had been up until that time, a real arcadey kids kind of thing. And all of a sudden, we've got real NFL coaches, playbooks, and real information about the roster of NFL teams and gave us pros and cons for each team. John Madden is considered one of the game's foremost experts when it comes to analyzing and breaking down plays. Making the game look realistic is a priority. I remember when we uh, first started, uh, we always wanted the game, the video game, to look like it does on television. You know, that was, that was one of my... Goals. The goal was to have it so a kid who didn't know football but was really good with his hands and a dad who knew football and couldn't hold a Sega control pad could compete. That the dad could call the play and say hike and do nothing and that a kid could try to make up for it. After a few months of hard work, John Madden football is ready for approval. We went back to Madden after signing the deal and said, hey coach, here it is. It's cool, eh? When he finally saw the first uh, build, it was at this big uh, marketing meeting. And the guys at EA are in for a big surprise. We were real nervous, and I was downstairs outside, you know, in a little loft in uh, South of Market, uh, waiting for John to show up. And, you know, he pulls up in a big limo. He was real massive, and he was pretty surly. He, he hadn't been out of coaching that long, and some of his finer social skills still probably uh, were yet to be developed, you know, from the, from the television uh, announcement and stuff. And he came on, and he sat down, and he looked at what we had, and he was chomping on a big cigar, and he leaned back, and he goes, um, is that supposed to be a goal line play? And we said, yeah, and he goes, some of this I can't say for uh, family consumption, but he said, that's not an effing goal line play, that is, uh, and uh, we were like, oh, no. 
That's not all he's unhappy about. Madden thinks the game doesn't look or feel realistic enough either. He expected to see like an NFL video, you know, not little uh, pixely guys with, you know, blue or red heads. He already thought we were dweebs. And he looked at it and he went, where's all the guys? He said, seven on each team. There's 14 players running around. And look at this, and you can create your own plays. And he goes, no. So that's not football. He says, that's not Madden football. Seven on seven football is not Madden football. Get out of here. And using the John Madden name means using John Madden's input. It was always very important to, to Coach Madden that it was a real football game. John always wanted it to be 11 on 11, because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be real football. The guys went back from that rolling their eyes going, geez, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. It was really hard to get that many guys going with the technology that existed at the time. The boys dragged themselves back to the drawing board. So it took us two more years to actually build a football game that reflected what Madden believed in with field position, and types of field conditions, and playbooks that reflected one-on-one -on -one matchups. And spearheading the project is EA president Trip Hawkins. Trip is kind of the Bill Gates uh, of the story. Awesome visionary, great guy, and his passion for sports and football went on for so many years that I think there was a lot of people just didn't know what to think about it. Finally, after years of toiling with the technology, John Madden football is ready. And for this young company, it's a labor of love. If it had been anybody other than Trip working on it, it would have been killed. But it was really his baby, and it went through a lot of different personnel. Trip was always involved, and eventually the first Madden got done. In 1989, the first Madden games released for the Apple II. It's an instant success. Everybody was happy and breathed a sigh of relief when it finally got done and got out. The fact that it actually did pretty good may have surprised some people, but it sure didn't surprise Trev. It was one of the first 11 on 11 experiences, and it also had a play editor, which was kind of fun uh, even back then. And the 11 on 11 gameplay Madden himself rallies for is something people have never seen before. On the original systems, it was very challenging. I mean, these were systems that were, uh, by today's standards, you, you couldn't run a calculator with these systems. It was a big challenge back then. In 1990, Madden releases his first console game for the Sega Genesis. And fans couldn't be happier. Even though it was in its barest, most infantile form, it still got everything that just carried on and made the series great today. I mean, they came up with their interface, the way they handled passing, play calling, everything. I mean, you can look back on that basic game, and it's all there. We said, well, we got to do football. We got to do hockey, because uh, we had some experience in that. And we get started. The EA Sports brand is born, and its anchor is the Madden football franchise. Soon enough, the two will become synonymous. The success of John Madden puts EA on the map and continues to raise the bar with new features that add to a more realistic experience. And with Madden 92 comes the EASN, the Electronic Arts Sports Network. And we conceived a sports brand very similar to ESPN. The lettering actually looked very similar. It was slanted. We also emulated graphically the announcers at the time. We did, you know, halftime stuff. We were just scrolling text, you know, but like it made it seem like there were other games in progress at halftime. So far, the series seems to be a success, but the next installment really becomes a fan favorite. Where we really start to see Madden take off was Madden 93 uh, on the Sega Genesis. It's simple stuff like, you know, catching a jumping touchdown catch when somebody else dove in front of you and, and you know, and they're left on the ground, you go running. Stuff like that, just the, the rewarding head-to-head -head experience. It all comes down to details. On the Genesis, what we'd do is we'd bring in like kind of gimmicky things like the, um, the, the ambulance. Just great gameplay. You're looking at teams like the Bears, the Eagles, great teams to play with, the Cowboys, the 49ers. You know, just having a blast sitting around playing those games to all hours of, of the night. And EASN gets busted by ESPN, the 24-hour sports cable network. So as EASN started taking off, it wasn't very long, maybe a year, a year and a half, two years max, that ESPN uh, came knocking on our door. And I, we're like, uh-oh. ESPN accuses EA of copying the look and style of the network. At the time, we're still small. You know, ESPN is this big, huge, you know, network thing. And we're like, oh, no, what have, what have I done? 
They didn't sue us, but they threatened action because, uh, you know, trademark infringement. They thought the logo looked too similar, the announcers looked too similar. It was a sports network. The whole thing was getting them up tight. So the two come to an agreement. So we negotiated, and they made it worth our while to stop being EASN. We negotiated a settlement whereby we would change our name, and they were going to give us a free television airtime. Uh, for, for commercials. So EASN became EA Sports. Madden 94 marks the debut for the tag it's in the game. Other additions include real NFL teams and four-way play on the Genesis version. Madden 94, I believe, um, was one of the first ones where you had the, the 3D camera system where you could actually pan around uh, a player um, and view that from different angles. And it creates a little bit better visualization of the field and it just helps the gameplay. Madden 94 provides the complete experience with enhanced gameplay. Interception! Options. Presentation. And music. John Madden's move from CBS to the Fox Broadcasting booth is reflected in the next game, Madden 95. But the most striking gameplay change is the windowless passing option. We took those windows off and it was like, oh my god, you can still see the guys running down the field and come open in a zone when they beat their man on a man-to-man -man coverage and you can throw the ball. The seemingly unstoppable Madden franchise and the mighty EA Sports production and marketing arms are challenged yet again. In 1995, Sony Computer Entertainment introduces the PlayStation, a brand new console. Eager to capitalize on this new hardware, EA goes to work. The developer, Visual Concepts, is hired to create the game, but the design team at EA is unhappy. A group out in California was working on it, not Tiburon, and it went on forever. Meanwhile, Sony begins work on their own football game, NFL Game Day. EA Sports was very vulnerable in a new platform because they hadn't made the commitment to PlayStation that we had. For us, it was PlayStation must win or we're all out of, out of work. It was, it was very simple. And uh, for EA, a lot of people believed Sega Saturn was more likely to be a successful platform. Well, they were wrong. Game Day gives Madden a run for its money. It offers a new look with new technology. That's exactly what gamers are looking for. Our first game day was a sprite-based, really 3D environments with, with, with overlay sprite characters, as was Madden. So we had the market to ourselves that first year, and that really allowed us to establish a sports brand for us. We had to stay with, you know, stay with the technology curve. Game day surpassed them, especially in the, the 3D stuff. Madden got caught with an old engine, tried to catch up, and missed the boat. Madden 96 doesn't ship, and EA loses millions of dollars in development money, but they learn a valuable lesson. Game Day made them go back to the drawing board, look at the technology. They had probably gotten a little lazy reusing the same engine. But that's the transition going to a new platform. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what you're going to be doing, and we really just didn't know what we were doing at the time. The missing year, that, that was a leap year, I think. That was a, a pretty brutal time for the Man franchise, and I know some guys lost their uh, jobs over that one. EA comes through the following year and releases Madden 97. <laughs> they finally get the chance to go head-to-head -head with Sony on the PlayStation platform. Took a year to regroup, had Tiburon do the, the code and, and do the game, and the game was, was great. Tiburon, a company based in Florida, takes over the development of the Madden franchise. I think when we first did Madden 97, we did it with the skeleton team. We had maybe 12 people total working on the product. EA did come out with a Madden game. And it's good. We came out with a game day. What? It was pretty nip and tuck. They outsold us. Uh, but that was Madden. And it had a tremendous following. It legitimized the platform. PlayStation went through the roof. Touchdown. Hi, I'm John Madden. The next year, Madden 98 succumbs to the competition. Incomplete. In the third year, we made a very bold move. We took game day and we went all polygonal. That was the one year that we actually outsold Madden. And I think it, it shook Electronic Arts to the core, the fact that they could be beat. And at that point, there was a perception that you could never beat EA in any of their sports. The rivalry gets ugly. Kelly Flock from Sony's 989 Sports Studios goes public with his gripes about the competition. And it's all on record. I did an interview for Next Gen. They asked me questions and I told them what I thought. They were making claims as to why their game was technically superior. And they were talking a lot about this feature they had in the game called Liquid AI, which, as far as we could tell, meant nothing. Based on the reaction when they saw the polygonal game day, they said Liquid AI was what was running down their legs after they saw our game. And 
It was a good one line. EA lets Madden 99 speak for them. The weaknesses in the 98 version are addressed, and the result is stunning. Madden outsells Sony's NFL game day. We went plaguing all that year, so graphically there was a, a big visual upgrade. Men in NFL 99 also introduced a franchise mode. You draft players, trade, you can uh, sign free agents, et cetera, et cetera. By the end of the decade, the Madden franchise generates revenues of $80 million. And EA Sports increases its share of the sports game market to 58%. Madden reclaims their spot at the top of the sports gaming genre. But EA's biggest challenge is yet to come. Hey, you want big time football? The hit, the boom, the doink, the whap. It's all here. Let's take a look at this on replay. When you see Madden PS2 played on a, on a TV, you may think it's a televised game, depending on what you're looking at. With the throw, Owen with the reception. 2000, Sony introduces a new system, the PlayStation 2, a follow-up to the wildly successful PlayStation, and EA is all over it. PlayStation 2, you brought in muscle texture, you brought in real player faces, you brought in real grass textures, you brought in, you know, so many things that you just never even thought of in a video game before, but it's second nature to watching it on TV to the point where you may think it's a televised game. The rush is on. Gannon hands it off. Touchdown, Raven. Electronic Arts and, and Tiburon, we really focused on PlayStation 2. We had our best and brightest folks working on it for probably two years before the game shipped. And they went and they made an engine and, and made a game that really was everything we wanted it to be. We sat around in a room for a week trying to figure out what would we want the ultimate Madden to be. We have those two outside guys, instead of running three, have them run post, double post. Post, deep post, like that? Yeah, right, yeah. And PlayStation 2 Madden in 2001 was, was probably it at the time. Uh, we came to E3 with something that was just visually stunning, and that was also, you know, one of the best kind of moments, um, you know, in the, in the franchise, is just going there with something just, you know, eye-dropping. The new game includes features that give gamers more options and gameplay. It's closer to TV broadcast quality with more intricate commentary and color analysis. He throws a bullet, but it falls incomplete. That pass was thrown with so much velocity on it that the receiver never caught up with it. PlayStation 2, we really started to see the swappable parts with elbow pads and gloves and different types of face masks. You know, over the years, we've, we've really kind of gotten into the, the more and more visuals that separate Madden from year to year. realistic player faces and we sort of halfway got there and we've kind of improved on that every year but once you start being able to zoom in on the faces you need to see them blink you need to see their eyes move you need to see articulated fingers I mean just the level of detail just kind of snowballed as we kind of delved into the nuances of the game yeah, the game isn't over yet here comes Sega Really, the competition has come from the Sega Sports franchise in the NFL 2K series. The Sega football game is real strong. And I know that it surprised EA. Really, what it comes down to for most gamers, though, is preference. And even Sega will admit, though, Madden set the standard. If EA Sports and John Madden football had never existed, Sega Sports' NFL 2K series wouldn't even be a reality. Although Sega makes a great game, Madden remains a fan favorite. The teams at EA and Tiburon work diligently to keep the game fresh and current. The stat was Madden has been the top five games for every year for the last, you know, five or ten years in terms of sales. A remarkable touchdown play. Yeah, everything seemed to go right on that one. It's a challenging one, so our attitude has always been we can't be complacent and really taking that attitude in terms of, you know, looking at the competition, looking at the trend, and really focusing on, you know, what are the two or three or four big things that we can add every year that will make this game feel like a must-purchase. Drop back. The most recent version of Madden is considered the best in the franchise and the industry. A tremendous. Yeah. It builds on everything we've done over the last you know, seven or eight years as a company, and we continue to add to it. So it should have the best gameplay. And it's complete. And the most features this year, we had the mini camp, we had the play editor, and we have the online. And just when you think things can't get any better, along comes online. <laughs> Online is one of our coolest uh, features in, in Men NFL 2003. Taking that level of technology and, and using um, internet connections. And playing with somebody, you know, your college friends from two, three years ago when you graduated or whatever, uh, that's just kind of an exciting part, and I think that part can continue to grow and grow. No video game has endured the test of time, economics, and fickle gamers better than Madden football. It not only grows with the times, but it's often ahead of them. And luckily for us, we'll be playing Madden for many years to come. 
The John Madden name is synonymous with video game football. He's an icon, a sports icon that is, you know, hip with the kids, so to speak. I'll be associated with it as long as it's pro football. The Madden franchise is really special because it's about sports, it's about real life, it's about content that's kind of constantly changing year after year. There's new stories every year in the NFL. As the game changes, we just change with it, and the game changes every year. EA Sports has found ways to make the series just better. It's kept evolving and improving. You know, we're always walking that fine line between fun and realism. And he's in for the score. The quarterback knew that he had to make that pass perfect, and he got the job done on that one. You know, our goal is to always make it fun. This game really almost fully realizes everything we ever envisioned or thought that we could do. I mean, there's times when I walk by the game and I think it's, you know, live TV. And that was always, you know, our number one goal. And we have to get better every year, and we do that. Boom! Now that is what football's all about. I think it, you know, we've come a long way. <laughs>